And so we discover how this map became this map with the click of a few buttons and with the aid of PowerPoint, allowing us to turn a static map into a dynamic map that we can go in and explore in tremendous detail with the pupils. So how did I do it? Uh, pretty straightforward. So I just took this map here, which gave me the location of places where there was uh, earthquake soil liquefaction from the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and I was able then just to get those locations you go in here to your ArcGIS online map go to your measure tool your latitude and longitude and then you just go and click in any of those locations then I'm able to copy that data and then go into a spreadsheet like this and I just paste the data in for latitude and longitude save that as a CSV file and then I add it in here, I'll go to add um, layer from file, the CSV file, and in it comes. Now, how did I turn those icons? Because I wanted them to be a little bit more icon-like rather than just the little dots. Very simple, you go into the layer that I've got, go to this. It's showing location only, um, but I want the options here for the symbols. I go into that. And it allows you to um, select a whole bunch of different symbols here, but I just went to disasters and use an image, and I just simply pasted that into Twitter, which is generally where I host them. Copy that. Um, copy image address. We're going back in here. Control and V, and we're just going to add that in, and it'll give me the image that I'm after. There it is. Click OK, and it turns it into that image. Now, what we're then able to do is to take this static map and really be in charge of scale. So the liquefaction hazard was concentrated in around about the Tokyo Bay area. Now you can look, I suppose, first of all, at the overall relationship between topography and liquefaction. Um, the liquefaction risk wasn't greatest closest to the epicenter, but where it did happen was in the lower lying areas. There's no liquefaction risk here in the more mountainous areas to the north, although the wave height was greater there. The liquefaction risk was concentrated in the river valleys and especially in the Tokyo Bay area, in the lowland area, coastal areas where there is, well, my students will already know this because we've covered this before with liquefaction, a lot of reclaimed land. So the um, soil there amplifies the shaking and you're much more likely to get liquefaction happening there than you will at the uh, just cancel that second well, then you will at the uh, rocky areas now i can turn on the layer here of wave height so what we can see is a very interesting pattern that most of the um, higher waves are found to the more mountainous areas to the north whereas the liquefaction area is concentrated more in the lower land to the south where the waves are lower. What an interesting little observation to go and explore. And again, this being a GIS map, you can zoom in there and have a look at the topography and see how the waves are funneled in at that point. My goodness, all of the wonderful, powerful geography that you can explore there just because I took some data from there and popped it into a spreadsheet. Wow.